Hey family, welcome to the Bearing Dose. Yes, yes, Peace George here, your dear darling host. How you all doing? I have a guest in the house. Hey, hey, Grant, how you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the Bearing Dose. Well, thank you so much for having me. I look forward to it. Uh, such a pleasure. So, you know, Grant, I've been on your page. I feel like we should start from there. So I went on your page snooping, okay? I wanted to know what's up with Grant. And, you know, I was a bit down. And then I got there. I saw you smiling. You know, it was just so healthy. It was peaceful at the same time. And, I, you know, you were doing, I saw all these videos where you were actually putting out great stuff out there where people can learn something. So every every post had some kind of takeaway in it. So what is your story and why are you this grant that, you know, that is right in front of me? What makes you think? What makes you thought? Thank you. I, I appreciate you. Uh, you taking some time to go uh, go check out my my stuff. That means a lot. Uh, you know, I I I like everybody have a, have a story, and it's it's funny. I get to tell my story a lot, and I get to find ways to use parts of my story to help people. And and uh, and so now I'm kind of in this space where I've got a lot more life after my transition now than I than I used to. So there's a whole lot more story to tell after after you know things have gotten well and uh gotten great and so i'm 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 from the from the east side of houston texas um born and raised i still live in texas i'm in austin now and uh and yeah i i i, I mean to be concise i i didn't really come from the wrong side of the tracks or anything like that you know i, I kind of went that direction I, I i veered left for a while and i played sports most of my most of my childhood and, and had a lot of opportunities potential opportunities that I ended up flushing down the drain when I got in a lot of trouble there in high school, um, started getting involved in drugs and alcohol and just kind of partying at first. And then it progressed into a little bit worse trouble. And I ended up getting booted out of high school. And I, uh, you know, I had a lot of wonderful influences growing up. I had a lot, we, we had a lot of dysfunction and we, and then I had some really healthy influences in my family as well. So I got some really good examples of both. Um, but, but after I, after I got in all that trouble initially, you know, that's what I thought was trouble. That was only just the beginning. You know, I kind of, I think I navigated through life for a while thinking that I was kind of immune to certain consequences, maybe, you know, because I had been able to get away with certain things up until that point. And so I guess in my mind, I just thought, well, it won't happen to me. You know, mm -hmm. um, you see things happen to other people and you're like, well, not me, you know. Um, and all those things finally did happen. You know, uh, I, I went to prison twice, caught three felonies, uh, you know, got an ex kind of an extensive criminal record, um, got in a lot of trouble. And I went to rehab a couple of times and I, I spent a long time between 2000 and, and I say long time, long for me at that young, you know, I was only like 19 when I went to treatment and I went to prison the first time. And so as I, the, over those next from like 2008, nine to 2014, all of those things that people assured me would happen finally happened. And all the bad things I, I spent time on, on, you know, sleeping in parks and homeless in prison and all those things. Right. And, and, uh, and so, you know, what happened was people asked me a lot. And again, there's a whole lot of little, a little details and little stories I could tell and, and all that kind of stuff. But, but at the end of the day, when people will always ask me, especially parents, right? Because I work with 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 people whose families are always, or I'm working with families too, right? And they got questions. They want to know. That's good. You, you know what? What does it take? What did it take for you, Grant? Why? What made you finally like get it together? That's right. Because we yeah. want to know That's how right. did you right. bounce back? How did you come out of it? This is so juicy. <laughs> I love it. It's hard. It's hard to tell, but it's hard though for me to tell. To, to, to know what it takes for another human being, mm. you know, it's, and there's a lot of, you could, there's a lot of good psychological work published on a lot of this stuff, you know, and we talk about the reconstruction of the ego mm. and how, and how, whenever we have a moment of collapse, how interesting it is in certain individuals, how, if we don't act upon that collapse for very quickly, our ego reconstructs itself very rapidly. And we, then we start to think that we overreacted and things aren't that bad. You know, uh, and 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 it, I, I went through this over and over again, 
And I realized that when I when that moment happened, that because that's the most the simplest way I can say it, is it was a total collapse of ego, you know, where where everything I was just very stubborn. I, I couldn't at the time. I consider wisdom at least one facet of wisdom to be able to learn from other people's mistakes, mm. you know. And I was not capable of that at that time. Um, I just had to figure it out for myself. People told me, and I didn't listen. And I when it happened, I was like. Okay, so when I work with people who are like that, I'm like, hey, you're my people. I, I totally get it. You know, <laughs> like I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally under, I understand. I see people and I meet people who can hear what I say and they're like, okay, you know what? I believe you. And they take my word for it and they can learn from my mistakes. But then there's other people who you just know they're going to have to bump their head uh, a few times before they finally get it, you know? And so my message as I've gotten, my story, you know, as I've, as I've, I've progressed in my recovery and sobriety and, and, and this whole journey has really just been like to not get so emotionally caught up on one thing that you don't take something better if it comes along. Mm. You know, um, that's that that's been it's just been constantly evaluating what I hold to be true versus what other people have told me is true. You know, asking myself those questions for a lot of things, right? And people, I think, are afraid to ask themselves those questions, you know. Um, but, it's, man, I I can't even – There's so my life is so full now. I have a daughter. That's – you know, you say, tell me about yourself, introduce yourself. That's always uh, – I don't know if you struggle with this, but I do. I do. When people say, oh, you know, introduce yourself, tell me about yourself. And I'm like – There's so many things competing. Yeah, you know, like, okay, which part of Grant do you – like – because right at the end of the day, these are all roles that we play, mm. and these are all characters that we have. And, and we walk around and I, I agree that you are who you say you are. And you mm. will agree that I say I am who I say I am. And and we have and I run into this a lot in my world where people mm. and, and, and especially speaking and doing podcasts and, 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 mm. and watching. You see people who um, and I used to be this way. They like have to tell you their story. They have to tell everybody they meet their story, you know, and it's. Mm. And, and I, I talk about this a lot because there's people who definitely disagree with me, but I do think that there's a level of maturity that happens as you grow, where you start to be able to discern, you, 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 re you realize that you have an identity outside of that, outside yeah, of just, yeah, story, yeah. you know, and it's like, okay, who is Grant outside of the person in recovery? Who is Grant outside of a father, outside of all of those, all of these like identities that I have, but who is, who am I? Grant, that's just a name, you know, wow. that, that my parents gave me, you know, so it's really, it's, and it's, it, it, and these, and I, I'm okay with maybe not ever getting the answers, to, you know, but that's not the point. The point is that like, I'm just perpetually asking these questions and Tony Robbins, I, I, you know, say what you will about certain like speakers and, and some of those gurus and all that, but I, I love, mm -hmm. When Tony Robbins talks about the key to happiness being progress, I, feel mm. I can relate so much to that because it's never been about the attainment of the goals. Yeah. It's just been about like who I who I become in the process. You know what I mean? Like I set goals because not because and Jim Rohn talks about this. I listen to a lot of a lot of you know all my not, nothing you'll see on my Instagram page is original. You know, let's just let's go ahead and say that now. And what really is original? I don't probably nothing, you know. You know, it's it. There's no. We don't have a lot of people who would say that, though. But you know, what I like is the authenticity. And honestly, like, if I had to listen to anyone tell me, "Don't make this mistake," you know, "Don't make that," it's the authenticity for me, mm -hmm. you know. And anyone can relate to that because that can shatter any fence that anyone is putting up. So I do oh. appreciate that. And you just, you know, saying it worked for you. That's a great one because then again, there's no general rule. Right. But I would like to know, you know, how you struggled, if you know what I mean. Like, would mm -hmm. you? the reason why I'm asking is, for anyone out there who is struggling also i'd like for them to know that this is the new you okay i like that we're not even tapping so much into the past like that because you know right. <laughs> hey this is you now you can guide someone else you are a light you see so i love that but now they know recovery 
how do I put this? Mm. If you had someone in front of you saying, Grant, is this even possible? What would you say to that person? Oh, I would say you can have anything in this life that you want if you're willing to put in the work that it requires to have it, whatever it is. And that includes recovery. Recovery doesn't come free. You know, it doesn't. That's what people don't realize is there are plenty of people who explore a sober lifestyle or the recovery scene who don't even have really a real problem with alcohol and drugs. They just want to explore that lifestyle. But for those of us who did have a deathly uh, issue with, with drug and alcohol addiction, my answer is that absolutely you can get well and you can stay well. And, And when I say well, I don't mean that you have to live a life shielding yourself from temptation. I mean, a life where it's just no longer an issue. Wow. It's, just long, it's a non-issue. And it sounds so lofty. I get it. It, 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 it ooh, I mean, I'm getting emotional, but it, it's, 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 um, it's only in that moment. It's in that moment where you just like, you don't believe that anything is going to work that like suddenly you have all the options in the world. That's like the moment of, of, um, of just pure and utter hopelessness, a level of despair. Yeah. I can it's, it, it had very little to do with the, I mean, I'm not going to say it had little to do because I'm not one of those people. Like I've worked with plenty of alcoholics and drug addicts who are what we would refer to as functioning, meaning they still have a job and, 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 and a family and a car and, and they're able to maintain those things with drug addiction somehow. I was not that guy. <laughs> Thank God, because it forced me down that rabbit hole much sooner. But, but it wasn't like, and, and, and I'm speaking to the people who, they think that they have to hit rock bottom externally, right? And there's all this talk about rock bottom and what that looks like. And I hate that. I hate that term, to be honest with you, because mm. uh, it's like it's like one of those kind of like those cliche things to say, right? Like one day at a time, live and let live. Yeah, you know, people don't know what else to say. So they're just like, mm. well, they just haven't hit, hit rock bottom yet. <laughs> I'm like, no, man, that's, that's such mm. a... Know what else to say in that moment you know and my my what, what i'm what i'm saying is that it, it had less to do with the externals and more to do with just that internal mm-hmm. like were you you just know a level of loneliness that like few people will ever understand mm-hmm. you know um wow. and 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 there's a line in our in our literature in the 12-step literature that says you will you will be unable to who man <laughs> Wow. So you, you'll be unable to imagine life. He said, one day you'll be unable to imagine life with or without alcohol. And then you will know loneliness such as few do. And then you will be at the jumping off place. And wow. uh, it's like, you have to like, I'm not saying that you have to get there. That's been my mission, right? That's been my like, how do I figure right. this out? How do I figure out how to walk people there? How to get people there without them actually having to physically go there? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. How can I walk them down that path and show them that this is possible for you? This darkness, this level of darkness w- is possible for you. And how do I can, how can I show them that without them having to actually go all the way there? That's what I'm trying to figure out because I don't know that I have that answer yet. You know, yeah. you know, all the, all the, all the meth addiction, IV mm-hmm. drug use, you know, lots of pills, all of those things, but those were, but just a symptom really of the real problem because uh, I'll say it like this, um, like a good a good buddy of mine says, he says, if if drugs and alcohol, and I'm just talking about drugs and alcohol, obviously I'm involved in mental health as a broader, and I'm going to get to that, but if drugs and alcohol themselves are the problem, then detox, the physical separation is your, is your solution. That's all you need. But if yeah. drug addiction and alcoholism are the issue, then detox and physical separation is just the beginning of it wow. because you will you will get worse in fact most a lot of people will get worse when you take those things away from them because that's their that's their solution right now mm. that's their answer that's what makes me feel 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 okay you're taking that from me and you think i'm going to mm. get better wow so instead of that you have some sort of rebellion that makes the matter worse you have to have something to replace it with you you have oh. to have something of, of equal or greater value to them, you know, something that, that, that holds depth and weight that can make them feel 
okay in the way that drugs wow. and alcohol made them feel. And if you don't, wow. and taking drugs and alcohol away from them and then just teaching people coping skills, mm -hmm. like that, that's a temporary solution. That's a Band-Aid. That's a Band-Aid. That's not, that's not like you're not going inside and you're not, you're not like, you're not doing the actual work. You just know, cracking just, the surface. Yeah, you're just wow. putting blinders on and hoping that it doesn't, oh, you know, and that's not, I don't want to live that way. I, I will never you. live that way. I get you. So you're saying there's a, there's a need for a mental detox, you know, as well as those things, because the vacuum will still be there if you don't. So you can't leave the vacuum there. You have to replace it or else they will go back. Right. Well, that, and that's, we're just talking about drugs and alcohol. That's with anything. Yeah, drugs and alcohol, yeah. That's so with anything. What, what did you do to, you know, kind of like fix that mm. in terms of the vacuum there? How did you feel that vacuum? What was it that helped you? Well, that's kind of a never ending journey, really. Um, I, like I said, my, the first, especially, four or five years of my recovery journey was very heavily immersed in 12 step recovery. That's, that was my way out. Um, and 12 step recovery is not, is not necessarily for everybody. Um, no. nor does everybody need that. That was just my, my particular path and mm -hmm. what I needed at the time. It was, it was, um, yeah, I mean, that's just, it's a very sacred part of my life. There are, there are so many components of the 12 step process that, People hear 12 steps and they all they all they hear is they hear that and they relate it to Alcoholics Anonymous, but they don't realize those 12 steps were were actually formed off of a set of tenets that came way before Alcoholics Anonymous ever existed, you know, from like the Oxford groups and from groups even before that. So mm -hmm. the process, like the actual work, is is it yeah. supersedes way beyond just like Alcoholics Anonymous or a 12 step recovery. People see that, but they don't realize this process of 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 spiritual direction of of self-inventory of taking mm -hmm. personal inventory of cleaning up your past of making amends those wow. things are things that any human being could benefit from doing you don't have to be an alcoholic to to do those things like that's silly to think that you know <laughs> and that's what but that's that's what i replaced it with and, it, and now i can't imagine a life that's one thing i replaced it with now since i realized that um, if you come to the ocean with a thimble, you're going to walk away with a thimble full of water. Wow. But if you want, it's an ocean. You come, you can take away as big of a container as you're willing to bring to the table, you know? And so I was like, there's a whole world of personal development out here. And that was just mm -hmm. kind of my springboard into it. But I realized people in the entrepreneurial space, people I work with in the business space, I'm like, man, I, I know people don't realize it, but if you can't, if you can't get your mental health under control, mm -hmm. You're not going to succeed in business the way you want to either. Oh, you know? anything else, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything, anything else, actually. Wow, I love, I love that. Do you know, Grant? I love your sincerity, honestly, and I think this is the way to go. Because I thank you for being so vulnerable. Thank you, you know, for not being so rigid to say, oh, if they do one, two, three. Because I sometimes I feel like <laughs> sometimes mm. it, it doesn't apply. Somebody else might just see that. And so you're saying there's a process, right? And um, it's a journey that, so what would you say helped you in terms of you just saying, this is this is the path I want to mm. stick to? What, what made you? Okay, I, I, I understand what you're asking. Um, whew, man. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm glad you said that because you're right. I don't like to do uh, the one two like do these follow these three steps and everything will be yeah, great. Like recovery 101 or that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> that's and but that's why and I'm not I could go off on so many tangents and I'm going to refrain from doing that. But but for me, I, I think it was just um, man, complete, uh, complete surrender. Like I just had to it didn't even matter what it was. At the time, it wouldn't have mattered if it was the 12 steps or whatever. Honestly, I finally just had a moment wow. where I realized that everything that I had personally tried to make things better had only made things worse up to that point. And I finally reached a point where I was like, man, um, I, I'm only at the time I was only 21, 22. 
but I was in and out of prison already. And I was like, I don't know. I just woke up one day. My grandfather had passed away. I realized that one day I was going to be getting out of prison and none of my family was going to be there waiting on me to get out. Nobody was going to be answering my phone calls, all those things. And so when I, I a huge component, huge, huge component is that I had encountered a man mm. who used to be the way I was. And he was not like that anymore. Wow. And I just asked him how he did it. Hmm. And um, because I, I that's, that's a huge piece of it. I believed him. Mm. I believed him. He articulated things that I, I, I wasn't able to. And he wow. spoke things to me and he said things to me that I would never let another human being say to me without getting punched in the mouth. Um, you know, but, but it's because I had fully trusted that he had been where I had been. Wow. And only when that trust is established. And that's, that's with anything you do. That's with any, everything we do in this world, in this space, in this mental health, this space of helping people. And that's what I, that's what's so hard to get people in this world to understand because there's so much ego tied up in, in, in people's licenses and credentials. And I'm a doctor and I'm a psychiatrist and psychologist and all this stuff. And that's great. But what people can't understand sometimes is that it doesn't matter what letters you have behind your name or what experience you, you have even. If wow. you cannot build a level of trust and rapport with the person you're trying to help, you're not going to be able to help them. Oh, you're wow. just not going to be able to help them. If they can't trust you enough to really let you in to see what's going on, you can't be helpful. Hmm. You can. And so wow. that's so, so trust, of course, takes some sort of surrender or so. You know, you just think, okay, no more barricade and all of that. I, lo I love that. I love I don't I love the sincerity you're bringing. It, it's so pure, you know, and that's what I like about you, Grant. This, this look, your struggle may not be my struggle, but this is where it starts from. That's right. And I, and I think that, you know, any young chap out there will be lucky to just have you, you know, in their corner around them, be their go-to person saying, hey, don't do this, you know, do that. Uh, with, with your sincerity and that purity of I'm not going to force this thought on you, right. you know, so that the, the person will not go the other way. But that's why we have rebellion in our society today. And that's what I appreciate about this journey. So looking at then and now, of course, the person you've become. I mean, I know we've not known each other for so long, but I'm so proud of you because given the picture you've given and, you know, me going on your wall and even finding motivation there, you know, how does that make you feel? You who you were once down there, but now, you know, you're here saying, okay, hold my hand, let me pull you up. How does that make you feel being on this side? That's... um. That's a really great question. I'm glad you asked that because I, I do feel like it's it's interesting that I feel like I do see sometimes a lot of times people will take for granted. Mm -hmm. I don't mean you have to live. You I don't mean you always have to live in that place where you used to be. But but I don't know. For, I don't know. Just for me, I'm I'm just like constantly, even if it's not conscious, even if it's just subconsciously, I'm conscious. I'm always so, some somewhere in the background is always that little tape playing remember where you used to be. Wow. And, 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 there, and there's just like, and it's just like this. I mean, if I even have a moment of like, you know, my dreams, I mean, the, the, the way things are now are, are where my, the problems I, I have now were my, were my dreams eight years ago for the things that I prayed for now that, you know what I mean? So when I have those moments, I think like, okay, like, you know, now the universe is testing me to see how bad I wanted what I said I wanted. You know, and I mean, I, and I just say that I don't know if the universe is really tested, but that's how it feels. That's how okay, I said I wanted this. How bad did I want it? How bad do I really want it? You know, and it does feel like I have become just obsessed with this idea that that any human being can literally begin anywhere in life and, and go any and become whatever they want if they're willing, uh, contingent, right, mm -hmm. upon whether or not they're actually willing to to do the work necessary. The work. Wow never the thing I find whenever I speak dreams and I try to speak my vision or I would share my, my dreams with people. What I started to realize was that it wasn't the thing itself 
that they doubted could happen. It was their own ability to make it happen that they wow. doubted. And I'm like, and I saw, I was like, I'm not going to, I just, I refuse to allow that, that thought process. Um, so it's just not lost on me. I don't take it for granted. I think about it every day and I'm so, so grateful. And I just, I'm like, man, I'm only 30. I'm only eight years really into this journey of, of Trent, you know, and I'm like, how much further, how much further can I go? And how many other people can I help do the same thing? You know, wow. who, knows, who knows how far those ripples will go. Thank you. Thank you so much. That That's a great message. You just put out there. You can be whatever you want to be. It doesn't matter how, you know, how, that, how much you've fallen. You can rise again. And I love that. That's very powerful. Thank you so much. So Grant, if there's anyone out there who's saying, oh, I want him to be my buddy. I can talk to him. He's vulnerable. You know, he's open-minded. He, he's approachable. Can I talk to Grant? How can we find you? Absolutely. Well, you can obviously very easily find me on Instagram at fit.with.grant. Um, but then another place you can actually find me is in our is in our platform, Recovery Club America. And it's it functions a lot like a social media platform. So I'm in there. Uh, and if you want, anybody can download that app for free. And it's uh, it's an app centered around mental health and addiction resources. And so uh, you can find me in there, shoot me a DM. And there's a lot of little private subgroups and support groups and stuff like that that you can uh, you can join also. So come find me in there. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. So good to have you here with us. And thank you for, you know, touching lives and just helping people in their transformation journey. It's so great. Thank you for joining us in the studio today. Thank you, our viewers, for sticking with us to the end. I hope you have learned a lot today. I mean, I have, because I've been writing stuff down in my journal here. You've talked about discipline. You've talked about just understanding your own journey is special. You've talked about bouncing back no matter how far you are falling. And you've also talked about surrender. And that is so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable. More than anything else, thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Grant. God bless you. All right, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Put it in the comment section. Let me know what you've learned today. And this is still your very lovely show, The Daring Dose. And Grant, we're great. we would love to have you back, you know, and just kind of like talk about the great things that you're doing and how you're helping to rebuild our world. Because so I think the world is in a very messy state and, you know, we need people to rebuild. And that's exactly what you're doing. And let me especially thank you for helping me jump back into that you know vibe because that's what i got from your page right it was so good i could see you your family smiling it's so contagious and i was like oh, look he's happy i can be happy <laughs> thank right. you so much god bless you bro you all right then until next week everyone from me to you it's bye-bye <laughs>